Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our live chat this afternoon for EWB's Q&A with Boris Martin, our new CEO, along with Shane Smith, Chair of our Board of Directors. My name is Paul Cheskon. I wanted to thank everyone for signing in today and just present a little bit of uh, logistical information up front. You are welcome and encouraged to ask your questions. Uh, and after some brief remarks by Shane and uh, Boris, we will uh, bring those questions forward to the group. To ask your questions, you can do so in two ways. First is through our live chat. You can access that by going to go.ewb.ca slash CEO live chat. You can also send your questions to us by email, ceo at ewb.ca. And uh, after remarks by Shane and Boris, we will uh, open up the floor and uh, ask those questions. In just a minute, we're going to ask Shane to uh, open up the call with some opening remarks. Please stay tuned. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, some people have just joined uh, that we see, so I just wanted to repeat a bit of logistical information before handing off the call to Shane Smith, Chair of our Board of Directors. We welcome and encourage questions, and uh, I'd like to invite you to ask your questions on one of two ways. First off is our live chat, which is accessible by going to go.ewb.ca slash CEO live chat. You may also email in your questions, and we'll uh, read them uh, into the call. You can send your question to asktheceo at ewb.ca. And Shane, I wanted to invite you to uh, open, uh, open the call and open our uh, Q&A session today. Paul, can you hear me okay? Yes, Shane, that's great. Go ahead. Okay, that's great. Um, well, thanks, uh, everybody, for, uh, for joining. Um, uh, today's call and uh, uh, this is a kind of a great way to uh, uh, to engage our uh, our broader membership and provide an opportunity to learn about the search process that we went through and uh, hear uh, really from Boris and I uh, directly how excited we are to be kind of taking this this next step in uh, in EWB's uh, evolution. So. Uh, so thank you to everybody for for joining today, and welcome welcome to our our call. Um, this is, I'm sure, just going to be the start of uh, many conversations across the uh, the organization uh, in terms of uh, you know how we can take advantage of uh, of Boris coming aboard in this new role and uh, and how to move the organization forward. So let me first uh, kind of outline a, a little bit of the um, selection process that we went through. Um, uh, by all accounts, uh, it was a very uh, involved and, and robust process, one of which we started uh, really uh, back in sort of January, February, um, culminating in our announcement uh, just a few days ago. Um, I certainly am I'm happy to entertain questions about uh, about the process, but let me just kind of outline it in broad strokes and um, you know entertain questions from then on. Uh, Really, when we when we started the process, we we recognized that EWB had quite a broad uh, network uh, that it could reach, um, but uh, we 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 actually did have you know we looked at this almost uh, as a recruitment uh, exercise, and and uh, I and other members of our search committee, uh, and certainly George reached out uh, to numerous individuals uh, around the world, um, so we didn't just rely on kind of the um, the dissemination of the job description through you know various means, but we also reached out personally and uh, had a I would say a fairly large number of conversations to to get uh, or to encourage people to uh, to think about how they might approach uh, the the job and how they how they might consider themselves for the role. So um, while this was going on, uh, we built a, a pretty comprehensive skill and competency outline. Um, 
uh, with uh, detailed descriptions and kind of broad strokes for the mandate of the role. Um, we uh, we attracted um, uh, over 50 applicants uh, from from around the world. The number was actually a fair bit larger than that, depending on um, who you consider to be serious applicants. But um, uh, we did apply a screening process to this larger pool, um, and the search uh, and transition committee, as we called it, was a was a tra- was a committee of the board uh, representing uh, myself, Catherine Karakatsanis, uh, Annalise Chabez. Uh, Josh Van Wick, uh, Tristan Allen, and George himself. Uh, we felt it was important for George to be uh, participating in in this process. Uh, we did a, a number of uh, Skype interviews. Uh, There's about 13 candidates that we applied kind of Skype interviews to. Um, we had uh, nine candidates make it to a second round of Skype interviews. We por- performed uh, psychometric testing, which kind of provided us with a um, a fairly broad spectrum um, view as to that person's personality traits. <clears throat> There's no kind of right or wrong answers to to many of these questions, but it does allow us to kind of drill into areas that um, um, you know just just make our, our our questioning more more effective. And you know, I can respond to questions about that if you have them. Um, all these uh, the Skype interviews that we we undertook. Uh, would most often consist of three of the six committee members, um, so that we had multiple points of view uh, and you know multiple opportun- opportunities to kind of take notes and ask questions at the same time. This all culminated to uh, to kind of a very short list of uh, actually six candidates, um, and uh, one candidate opted out for uh, actually a. Um, a position with the United Nations, just to kind of show you the types of candidates we had, and just again to kind of give you a, a perspective on uh, the candidates that uh, that competed for the role. Um, we had folks with backgrounds, uh, entrepreneurial backgrounds in the social uh, innovation space, uh, folks that um, had senior positions over leading uh, NGOs. Um, certainly, um, folks with international development expertise, and some of them I would consider to be top shelf international development experts. Um, candidates had business backgrounds, and some um, were connected to EWB, but many were not. Uh, you know, in our, when I look at across our whole search process, there was quite a large number of people that would come from outside of kind of the EWB uh, organization. From the short list, we asked uh, folks to kind of present um, their vision for the direction uh, where they would take EWB. So they would they provided a 30-minute uh, presentation, followed by about uh, an hour and a half of uh, of, of Q&A, uh, where we would ask them clarifying questions about the presentation itself, and then we'd drill in on on kind of their experience and approach, and probe some of the areas that would come out in the the testing that we had done uh, previous. This was followed by kind of a lunch or dinner with the committee uh, members. Um, we um, had two external assessors interview each candidate. These are, I would call them friends of EWB, but folks who really understand the dynamics of the organization. Uh, and so uh, the short list of candidates was subjected to those interviews. And we also did uh, reference checks uh, to, um, uh, you know, to varying degrees with uh, the, the candidates. Um, so uh, we basically boiled all this down and uh, and, and looked at you know our criteria. Um, I uh, I have to say um, uh, and and recognize the the, the membership. Uh, there was nearly 200 EWBers uh, that provided feedback on the selection and the process. Um, and I and really that that kind of feedback was very very valuable to us as we kind of weighed uh, the options. Um, you know what we heard from from that feedback was that the membership very much wanted a leader, the next leader, to be aligned with EWB's vision and values, uh, someone who cared deeply about EWB uh, EWBers in the network, uh, someone who was a visible communicator, someone who had experience in running you know all or part of a medium to large organization like EWB. Uh, some of these are obvious, but uh, um, experience in international development and in Africa specifically. Um, someone who can learn and someone brings humility, someone who's willing to, to listen to, to the organization, uh, someone with the ability to get uh, stuff done, who's, who's got a track record in execution, uh, and somebody who is uh, 
I would say, decisive, uh, driven, and ambitious for the impact that EWB can have. So that was kind of the lens uh, that was provided by the, the feedback um, that um, perhaps people on this call contributed to. So uh, I thank you. Thank you for, uh, for that. Um, the choice of Boris is one that we are uh, extremely excited about. Um, it was a unanimous decision by the selection committee uh, to uh, to invite um, uh, you know Boris uh, into into the role. Um, we are absolutely thrilled. Um, I think that uh, you know you have to recognize that uh, you know Boris probably had both the toughest and the easiest job. Uh, toughest because uh, you know, the committee members thought they knew who he was, um, but hadn't you know necessarily provided him with an opportunity to articulate uh, you know uh, his his vision as 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 a CEO candidate. So we made sure that uh, I mean Boris was very much uh, treated the same as any of our other uh, candidates. Um, but I mean Boris's deep uh, commitment to EWB and the cause. I mean he absolutely lives it. Um, uh, I would say that uh, uh, you know Boris in the process uh, demonstrated a very detailed vision and plan for EWB, which was very well uh, thought through. Um, at the same time, Boris, I think, has a very humble character and, and he's willing to you know, ask questions, listen to feedback, but a very strong emphasis on building back our talent and, and network base within the organization. Um, some very interesting ideas about how to expand the chapter networks, both in Canada and internationally. Um, I would say that Boris has a very realistic funding plan, um, and as we grow the organization, uh, fundraising is an important element, obviously. Um, but he also had a very strong personnel and management plan, and I guess you know that is a benefit of knowing the organization so well. Um, but because of the feedback that we've gotten from the membership and and also our you know the own our own filter, uh, that was extremely uh, important. Um, so I would say that. Uh, you know, just kind of wrapping up here that um, I personally uh, have really seen a lot of um, development within uh, Boris. Um, I know you're anxious to hear from him, so I'll very quickly turn the, the floor over to him. But, uh, you know, there has been points in time over the last 12 months, I have to say, when, when you know, I really saw um, uh, Boris, uh, you know, develop his leadership skills. And I've, I've really seen him light up a room Uh and so uh, it, it was really satisfying to, to see that, you know, Boris, when we stacked him up against all the other candidates that we had, um, and like I said, these were candidates from around the world. We flew people from Europe and Asia for interviews, um, that, that Boris really was the best choice uh, to, to move forward with. So, um, so I think that's, you know, that's maybe how I can kind of uh, um, char characterize that. Uh, I, I do have to say that, uh, you know, I, like Boris, uh, in an organization had gone through my own personal journey where I was an internal candidate um, and part of an external search. So <laughs> I could uh, I could certainly um, uh, uh, sympathize with, uh, you know, the the, uh, the the trial that we put uh, that we put Boris through. Um, and so I do just kind of want to wrap up here uh, by saying that I think we had a, a fantastic uh, process that I think was uh, was an excellent one for the organization to go through. Um, I, w I would conclude by saying that um, our choice of Boris, uh, I think, is definitely a vote of confidence for the talent that we develop from within EWB. It it's an example of how we can continue to promote from within and develop leaders. Um, but this by no means is, is endorsing um, status quo. Um, I think the outside perspectives that we are provided in this process uh, from many learned sources, um, I probably increased our resolve to grow uh, the organization, both in size and impact. Um, I would say that it's probably um, increased our resolve to achieve a clarity of message that uh, you know very much focuses on value for money uh, and uh, with respect to our impact, and uh, focuses on execution and 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 and. Uh, um, and the development of, of programs that are effective. So, so with that, uh, I would offer my own personal congratulations uh, to, to Boris. Uh, I would like to thank our uh, Search and Transition Committee that was extremely engaged through this whole process. They did a phenomenal job. Um, so congratulations to you, Boris. And uh, I know 
you're the main act today. I know that folks are, are really looking to hear from you and hear your message. So um, with that, I'll, I'll hand, it, uh, hand it to Boris. Great. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Jane. That's um, very, very kind words, very nice, uh, very supportive. Um, it means a lot to me that uh, you went through the entire process and, and gave, gave us details like that. And welcome to everyone on the call. Uh, thanks a lot for joining us. Um, I'm, I'm really honored. I'm really excited to be here. Um, it's a bit strange because I'm, I'm talking on the phone and, and I kind of know that people are listening in, but uh, it's, it's a strange, uh, it's a strange configuration. I'm so uh, impatient to have in per, like in-person conversations with you at retreats, uh, at chapter visits uh, in the coming few months. Um, but I just wanted to to extend a, a really warm welcome, um, yeah, and and a thank you for for joining us. It's a it's a very exciting time personally. Obviously, um, I'm I'm going through a, a massive uh, a massive change. I'm, I'm extremely inspired by the opportunity that I have to 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 take this role. I'm, uh, as Shane said, you know, I'm I'm uh, I've been 11 years with uh, the EWB family um, since 2003 when uh, when I joined at the McMaster chapter. I was a, a graduate student at the time, and I still remember my my first conference. Um, standing at the back of a room with 700 other passionate engineers and non-engineers, people who really want to take um, like an ingenious, a rigorous um, question-asking way to, um, to engage in solidarity across uh, the globe. And uh, that was massively inspiring to me. I still remember the feeling of uh, this is this is it. This is the um, this is the crowd I want to be a part of, and um, like it's such a resonance with my with every cell in my body and everything that I think our generation can become uh, connected around purpose and and responsible living uh, for for justice for all. And and that's something that's inspired me to to step up to this role. I mean I've. You know, I've spent three years in Burkina Faso uh, leading our, our agriculture uh, team there, and I, I've seen the humble way in which uh, EWBers choose to engage in, in, uh, in, in providing value uh, across wealth barriers, across culture barriers, and in fact, uh, making the most of cultural differences in surfacing uh, innovations and servicing when, what can really make a difference um, in people's lives and in our lives, in, in, in learning about ourselves through the process. And I've admired so much how much, how we've evolved from, you know, a Canadian volunteer sending organization to a, a reciprocal organization with the Kumbana program inviting leadership into our organization. And I think we're at the, at the, the really seed stage of, of seeing an organization that is uh, crossing uh, Canada's borders and, and really um, extending its community uh, in Africa and doesn't, you know, it doesn't, doesn't feel insular in, uh, anymore. Um, yeah, so I believe in the impact of our, of our ventures. I believe in the approach that we're taking on the ground. I'm, I feel part of this, uh, of the CWB family, and to me that's, um, that's what makes me uh, grounded and, and excited to be uh, to be taking this role. At the same time, you know, they, I could I could be connected to uh, to people. I could believe in this organization and not necessarily step into this leadership. And so that I think there are other other parts of me that 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 have um, that have ambition and that have drive and vision for for the next stage of this organization. And that has also been a big part of of coming into this. Um, the last past five years, I've been uh, in the EWB office, in the executive team, alongside George, um, alongside Sarah Grant at a moment, and Mark Abbott, Alex Conliffe, um, and, and and really that's you know a small executive team. The reality is that there's a leadership team in the in the office. Uh, we've been 25 us sometimes, 17 now. Um, really mobilized around uh, serving the entire community and serving this organization at a strategic level. 
and, and I've played a role and I've discovered myself in bringing crystal clear or I don't know, crystal clarity to um, to what we do and 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 some of that I think some of that spike in in sort of like making sense and framing and staying on task, staying on focus, saying no to things that maybe look good but are actually distractions. Um, and I think that focus is something that's bolstered my confidence in in really uh, continuing providing leadership uh, in this national office. Um, I've, my confidence has been both bolstered by the uh, the people that have been around me and and appreciate working with me and and but at, at the same time it's me feeling like you know um, leadership at EWB is not an individual thing uh, it's not um, you know, a grand position that dictates or or what whatnot and that my role in a way in a humble way is is part of a being part of that family being part of an enabling team. Um, uh, in the office, and that makes me quite reassured in, you know, the skills that I see in Alex on operations, the, the skills that I see in Paul on, on fundraising, and, and Therese on finance. Uh, these things are really uh, making me really excited for what we can achieve together. And, and the last point I would make about kind of like how I come into this is that I don't come in alone. I, um, Alana, my wife, has also is is also very excited about uh, me stepping into this role, and she's seen me sort of grow as a leader, and uh, she's been extremely supportive in in me making this choice. And and to be very honest with you, um, I wouldn't have chosen to step in this role if it wasn't the case. Um, yeah, it's it's not a it's not a solo journey. I'm not a solo person in any way. Uh, I'm connected to to thousands of you across the organization. I'm just a part of this organization. I'm connected to dozens uh, uh, in in the office uh, on a daily basis, and I'm also connected as a human being to those who provide me emotional support. And that's that's who I am. That's that's how I come into this. We like I'm I'm coming into the role at a time where uh, there's both opportunities and challenges. Um, you know, we're we're building a team. We have um, portfolios that dearly need resources, dearly need support uh, in really expanding our, our partnerships. Um, we, we're doing some really exciting things around the conference this year, and I I think you know if you link up with the conference team, you'll hear about some of them. If you link up with people in the office, you'll hear about some of the way we're approaching our work. Not saying you know, oh, this is EWB's vision in transforming uh, the engineering profession into global engineering. It is actually a sector-wide vision. There are organizations, companies, engineering companies, and, um, and funders that really want to see that happen. And so I think there's a shift in, in the way we've been engaging uh, in, in creating systemic change, which has been to, to simply um, you know, talk about the change uh, at arm's length and saying, what is the role, the unique role we play in this change? Who are the other actors coming to the table? And um, I see that as a massive opportunity for, for all of us to bring our energy and to, to multiply that energy with other organizations' contributions to it. So a very big P partnership um, in the coming six months uh, that you can look towards. Um, and, and that requires uh, leadership in the office. That requires you know, people making phone calls, building those, those relationships, and, and that brings the skills to that. And so my intention is really to build a strong team around that. Um, and, and so you can look forward in the, in the next two months to um, sort of get a few introductions to, to people who are stepping up to, uh, to important roles um, around these portfolios. Uh, to me, there's also a, like a massive opportunity in our community to really uh, deepen our engagement, to deepen our engagement as, as EWB members and, and especially ask the question, you know, what are the core skills and core practices that an ewb -er, and that I have as an ewb -er for 11 years built for myself? What is the unique set uh, that we bring in that we want to systematize? And the, the community team in the office, uh, Mathieu Bister, uh, Evan Walsh, uh, Mark Abbott, Florian uh, Villomé, uh, ils, ils ont tous travaillé à vraiment um, 
à comprendre quels sont les quels sont les, les domaines de compétences qu'on veut développer. They, they really brought a, a new clarity to, to the skills that we develop in the membership. Um, and so that's very exciting to me. There's an opportunity in September to to look to take a fresh look at everything we do, um, and to start taking a bit of a disciplined approach to celebrating, in a way, the uh, the, the 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 great skills and 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 practices that we develop for uh, I don't know thousands of tens of thousands of, of people every year uh, across Canada. And it's, 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 uh, it's inspiring to even think the, the footprint that we, we have had for the past 14 years and the footprint that we can continue to have across Canada and beyond Canada around those, um, those approaches, the values we bring to our work, uh, the skills that we develop, the, the systemic perspective that we take to, um, to creating uh, social change, social value. Um, I would say that the, the last area of, of focus before before we go into conversation that I wanted to mention is that it is is uh, finance and and funding. Like uh, the reality is that um, the the ambition that we have brought so far to the change and the partnerships that we're building on the ground uh, in in Ghana, in uh, Uganda, in Zambia, in Malawi. And, the, and the, the action that we're taking in Canada uh, in global engineering, in food systems, um, in, in you know, fair trade and, and, uh, and advocacy is really like requires resources. And, and as, an, like we're, as an office and as an organization, we're coming out of a, a tough financial year in 2013 and, and a sort of like a small start to 2014. Uh, we've done. I'm, I've admired uh, Therese and, and the work that she's done on financial planning and the entire team for making really tough choices at the beginning of the year, uh, at, just after the conference when we really looked at what our financial year was going to be look was going to look like, and we're we're almost out of the weeds on that, uh, but the effort still needs to be strong. And so that's you can count on our fundraising team to really put their effort. I so much admire and was so uh, inspired and, and sort of impressed by the how fast the It Takes a Village platform took off in the past few months. Like the number of chapter presidents and chapter members that actually stepped up and said, you know what, uh, we're all in this together. We have collective vision. We can take collective action. Um, let's really put our resources together um, to make the most of, uh, of, of our impact. And that, to me, is something that we need to keep, go keep going on. We need to really uh, continue refining our communication and, and our points of access to really understand, uh, understanding what's happening across the ocean, what's happening in, in a chapter, so that someone who's uh, in Zambia can also be inspired by what's happening you know, at the at the McGill campus on, on fair trade um, and vice versa, um, and knowing that we're all in it together. Um, that's, those are the things that, I, that, um, that we can put in place so that the, finance, like the, the funding uh, wherewithal of EWB is growing stronger and stronger uh, year after year. And there's both a short-term need to, for my own energy and, and the energy of our team to, to go to that, and there's a long-term, um, you know, eye on the prize of becoming a community of contributors who are really making EWB a resilient, long-lasting organization. Yeah, um, Paul, I think you're the moderator. Um, I just wanted to say thank you to everyone again for welcoming me in this organization. Uh, thanks for the, uh, to the board for, for trusting me and, and uh, putting your stamp of approval on on, on the vision uh, that I bring, the energy that I bring to this role, it's, uh, it's an honor. Um, so thank you. I'll just, uh, I think, leave it to the, to the questions now, and, and I'm excited to, uh, to engage in conversation. Great. Thanks, Boris, and, uh, and thanks, Shane, also for, for your remarks and shedding some light on the, on the process that, uh, that you and, and the rest of the board and the uh, Search and Transition Committee uh, went through. Uh, I know it was uh, many, many long hours, uh, tens and hundreds of hours that, uh, that you and the team put in to, to finding um, the, the best candidate for, for EDB's next CEO. And so on behalf of the organization, thanks for, for putting in that effort. We have a half an hour left in this call, and, and we're going to uh, invite your questions and uh, pose them to, to Boris and to Shane. 
We have a couple of questions that have come in by email and as well some on our live chat. I'm going to just do a quick infomercial here and give out the information again if you uh, want to send in your questions. You can go to uh, go.ewb.ca slash CEO live chat if you would like to join the live chat and pose questions. You can also send in your questions by email. You can send it to asktheceo at ewb.ca. We'll get through as many questions as we can uh, in the next half hour. And then following, immediately following the call, uh, Boris will be on our, on our live chat uh, for another hour and a half uh, responding to your questions. First question is from Shivani. Shivani is the president of our Western University chapter in London, Ontario. One question is, what is one thing about EWB that you think we can do better? And what ideas do you have, Boris, to get us there? Wow. Um, I think we can do better um, at telling the story of the impact we're having. Um, telling, and I mean, I, I picked this one because you know I, mean, I just heard the question, and and that's the first one that came in. It must be uh, important enough. Um, telling the story of the impact we're having, and and you know, I think we're really good at. Observing, we're really we're um, we're great reflectors. Um, we are great at dissecting the different dimensions and the implications, and some and, and oftentimes the risks associated with taking action in every place that we work. Um, we need to be great at understanding this impact, taking ownership of it, frankly, and putting a measure to it, and saying, you know what, like here is the number of people that are growing in these dimensions of skill, and this is why we think it's important to the world. Uh, it's saying, here's the number of, uh, I don't know if it's a number, um, here's the impact that, that our ventures are having, um, and, and I don't exactly know what the metric is going to be, um, uh, but, but we, need to start, uh, we need to start doing a good job of telling the story and bringing, um, like bringing a scale to it, I guess. Thanks, Boris. Shane, I don't know if you'd like to uh, jump in on that question from a, from a board perspective, uh, if you also have a response to uh, what is one thing that EWB can get better at? Well, I would just say Boris is right on with this. Um, and we, we heard time and time again, uh, even in, in the process that we went through, we, we provided a lot of information uh, to, the, to the candidates. And, and they also pulsed their own sources for information about EWB. Um, what was clear from the search process was that EWB has a phenomenal repu reputation. People are amazed at the impact that we have, uh, the strength of our volunteer base, the passion of our membership, um, and they, they, they were just um, really, really excited by, you know, the, the power of EWB. Um, but again, we heard consistently that um, there's a lot that we can do to kind of improve uh, as Boris said, the storytelling, the marketing message, um, so that people supporting the organization in all the various ways, from funding it to volunteering it to participating in it, um, can really understand the impact they're having. And um, you know, I think that is probably one thing that if we, we there are there is a lot of value in bringing external perspectives to bear, um, and and particularly a marketing skill set. I've, I've worked for years in engineering organizations and engineers think they're great marketers <laughs> and and oftentimes they could uh, let's just say benefit from external perspective and from people uh, and and from folks that are professional marketers and 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 so I think we have a great story to tell uh, and Boris is bang on in terms of uh, the need to be able to tell it in a you know just in a, in a more effective way because I think um, if we do tell the story in a more effective way uh, people will line up to support the organization in various ways. That that's quite clear. So, thanks, Shane. Don Thurston has uh, emailed us a question. Don was a former member of our board of directors, and uh, he asked us to say congratulations to Boris on his appointment, and thank you to Shane's leadership in uh, in helping us uh, find the the best CEO. Boris. Can you please list your top three priorities coming into the role? Yes. 
maybe some of it some of it transpired already in the the remarks that I made. Um, one, building a team. Um, it like we have positions. I think there are five positions open online right now. Um, and building a team is not recruiting uh, some people to to fill those gaps, but it's also thinking um, and getting external input on how do we best manage a team of 17 people? How do we enable the um, a, a strong focus on results and a strong focus on sort of the impact we're having on the ground as the primary driver for our planning? Um, so, so really building the, the team from a people perspective and from an architecture perspective um, would be priority number one. Uh, priority number two would, is continuing fundraising, bringing, um, so delivering, like delivering now because, you know, the, the, the year is in, in March and we, like the year is, is ongoing and, and we have uh, responsibilities to continue delivering on. Um, and taking, uh, increasing the, the level of um, scrutiny, I guess, that we're taking on our investment uh, for our efforts versus uh, payoff. Um, so it's, that's establishing systems being, um, uh, it's, it's, it's delivering and increasing our, our operational um, sort of, um, strategy. Um, the last one for me would be uh, is actually is taking taking stock of the situation, the different parts of the organization. That's it's my priority because as I, the way we George and I talk about it is like lifting all rocks, making sure that as we're going through that transition. The, the very fine knowledge that George has of every single corner of EWB, you know, the, the, the cupboard that you open and there's uh, wires going all over the place and things have a, have a logic to them, but um, the founder may be the only one who has it. <laughs> um, and so we, we want to take a really disciplined approach to, um, to discovering that together, to not lose uh, very essential knowledge, and, and it's not just a cupboard with files in it. It's the soft, intuitive pieces that George and, uh, has brought to his role um, that I want to take time to in, unpack with him. So it's doing basically facilitating a really great transition. Uh, as I say the word transition, something came to my brain, which is that on the priority number two on fundraising, a lot of it is also part of the transition. It's making sure that the relationships that the way we're going about this transition is respectful to our key partners, um, the people that are funding this organization, the people that are supporting it uh, with their name um, uh, and, and with, their, with their influence. Um, and so uh, this is something that's, um, that's part of that, um, I guess, priority number two. Thanks, Boris. I just wanted to, uh, again, mention uh, as people are uh, joining the call, if you have a question for Boris or for Shane that you'd, uh, you'd like to share and have answered, you can ask your questions by going to our live chat. That's go.ewb.ca slash CEO live chat. You can also email in your questions to ask the CEO at ewb.ca. We have another question from uh, Patrick Miller. It's, when reviewing applicants for the position, how did you balance the applicant's ability to meet the needs of EWB as an organization versus the applicant's ability to enable EWB to fulfill its five-year direction? Were these two topics considered one and the same? I'm just reading the question again to make sure that I understand it. There, there was um, a c considerable conversation around uh, the five-year direction um, in terms of how constraining that would be, uh, you know, for a candidate, to, specifically one from coming in from the outside of the organization. You know, if they saw things differently, um, how uh, flexible would the board be in supporting um, that CEO um, in, you know? Working maybe within the broader theme of the of the vision, but uh, you know, wanting to you know take things in a more aggressive or less aggressive uh, you know uh, direction. Um, I think as a board, we made it quite clear that um, you know a, a vision is aspirational. Uh, we do believe that uh, EWB has 
has a strong uh, vision for change in the areas where we want to have impact, but uh, that there is considerable flexibility. A plan is a plan. Um, and we were very open to um, uh, to, to anyone, uh, you know, improving upon that plan, um, you know, possibly being more aggressive around the, the, the growth or the, and the impact the organization can have. So, um, so I would say that, uh, yes, the two topics were, were considered. Um, uh, we didn't expect uh, candidates to be so knowledgeable about the vision and strategic plan that, uh, um, you know that that we you know we grilled them on on that aspect of it. I think um, I have to say that that when folks were coming from outside of EWB, um, it was uh, pretty breathtaking. I mean, we, we had uh, with the final candidates, uh, they brought uh, um, a very mature perspective. Um, like I mentioned, some of their backgrounds. So uh, you know, with those backgrounds, they kind of applied their own lens to how they saw EWB, where they would take it. Um, where other comparable NGOs have gone. Um, so I think there was kind of almost a group recognition that, that EWB is at a transition point right now. Um, you know, I think we can be very proud of where the organization has come from and where it is today, but uh, very clear that, you know, we could really take the organization, um, uh, you know, it, it is mature in some respects and not in others, um, that, uh you know, there's a considerable opportunity to take it to the next level. Um, so that was kind of echoed, I would say, through through all these interviews. Um, in terms of meeting the needs of EWB as an organization, I, I think that, that had various flavors to it because, I mean, if people really understood EWB, they would recognize that there is a desire to uh, continue to uh, grow and um, feed the chapter movement. Um, Boris may want to share more about his vision for for chapters and their expansion, but uh, um, you know, obviously, um, we we could have um, entertained a, a new leader that you know would have, I, I would say, um, uh, professionalized EWB's international development approach. But um, I would say that that we, well, at least we recognize as a group that if we made EWB into you know. Um, if we took it down the path where it became much like a lot of other NGOs where their prime mission is to just deliver international development services and, you know, compete with, you know, all the the many uh, organizations and consulting companies that do this, uh, that we'd be leaving out um, uh, a significant part of our volunteer base. We'd be leaving out um, the opportunity to, uh, or missing out on the opportunity to develop um people who really don't know anything about international development. Um, that's the one miracle of EWB is that if you're interested in international development and have no background whatsoever in it by participating in the dialogue, in the events, in our organization, uh, in a very short period of time, you can you can become a change leader that's actually having real impact on the ground in Africa or um, impacting advocacy and policy or educational development here in North America. That's pretty amazing, right? That's a very different aspect of EWB that um, that a lot of other organizations just you know do not embody or or do not seek to you know to uh, to be you know to to include as part of their purpose. So um, I, I don't know, Patrick, if I've answered that uh, you know completely, but uh, I think you can see that we really did um, you know think about uh, you know what EWB stood for. Um, but I think we gave the candidates a lot of flexibility in terms of how they would. Uh, approach that. And in, in the end, we had to balance, you know, exactly, you know, what the organizational needs were with uh, with vision and direction. So, Thanks, Shane. Uh, Patrick uh, continues with a question for Boris, um, and uh, it's regarding some of the uh, natural flux and transition that's been happening within EWB uh, over the last uh, several months and, and continuing into the next couple of months. With many people changing positions and uh, a new round of recruitment for a variety of higher level positions, what are some of the key get rights and the key don't be wrongs during the next three months for us? Hmm. That's uh, that's interesting. Um, yeah, so so let me uh, for for those who might not actually know completely, like it, it's true that five, five there there are two factors that affect um, 
like the the situation that we are in in terms of like the new people we're seeing coming into the office, uh, but also like the just the number of positions that are that are uh, filled in the office now. We um, the first factor is the fact that we've made a conscious choice um, 12 months ago, uh, or but no, six months, seven months ago. We we're in July, in so in January, to as we were looking at. Well, actually, I'm saying 12 months ago because it's July last year that we started looking at our cash situation and figuring that we had been driving at a at a very high pace. Uh, frankly, out of the ambition we had at the you know in in 2013, like early 2013, and and we had been quite mindful of that. Um, we wanted to experiment in augmenting our, our community support. We wanted to experiment with opening up the space to for new ventures to to join the um, the WB family. Um, but that came at a cost in July last year, so 12 months ago, from a cash perspective, and where we had to pull back on some things. And since then, so yes, over the past 12 months, there's been attrition in our office. At the the height of that, uh, we were 25. Now we're 17. Um, you know, that's a, it's actually a fairly major shift in in capacity, and that's meant uh, rearranging the roles. That's meant uh, reinventing a few things, and also accepting trade-offs that we wouldn't actually be able to deliver at the same level of quality on the support we, that we provide to ventures and like on on the support, frankly, that we've also provided to the community in the past six months. So. We're we are in that like the first factor is that uh, is that phase of compromise and as I said you know uh, things are looking good for us to actually get out of the weeds on that and start building up and so some some of the uh, the hiring is in that spirit it's like we're not uh, we are we're not in the phase of continuing attrition we're actually in the phase of building our capacity um, and the other aspect is turnover. Um, and, and I would say, frankly, from the conversations that I've had with people in the office um, leaving, and you know, you could say, well, this, that's what they're telling me, but that's also the because I'm the, the, the new person arriving. But um, it's uh, it's also the conversations that they've had with Mark uh, on our talent team, and is that the uh, it's not like because George is leaving, other people are leaving. Um, the there's a there's a natural transition. Uh, if I take someone, um, well, let me not not take examples because I don't think it's uh, it's relevant, or I haven't asked people whether I could or not. Um, uh, but people like long time long time contributors who who uh, are like, well, you know what? It's been four years, or it's been six years that I'm contributing to the office, or that I'm contributing to the organization. I need a change, and um, and this transition is a, is an opportunity to do that. Um, and so all that is leading to the situation that Patrick, you're you're describing, which is, you know, what does what what needs to get what do we need to get right? Um, and so, like, for me, there is a a crucial balance in our office and the entire organization, which is, or uh, it's not a, a balance, I guess it's a um, uh, it's a challenge. It's how do we um, manage to bring people externally that will understand the uh, complexity and, and will sort of embrace the culture of this organization, understand it, and add to it and, and shape it. Um, well, uh, well, I guess that's the, that's the challenge. So like, uh, can we, I don't think we can rely 100% on our internal pipeline for everything we do. Um, so there's an, a skillful bringing of external voices. But striking a balance and making sure that we actually nurture something like a team that has cohesion that represents the the, the values and the culture of the organization. And so that's uh, as we interview people that are coming externally, as we are interviewing uh, internal candidates as well. That's I would say one of the big uh, considerations. Sorry, maybe that was a bit um, uh, not the clearest way to express it. Um, and and you said get rights and not getting wrong. Oh, the not getting wrong, I would say for me is in um, sort of the level of capacity that we bring to what area of the organization, and uh, like part of that is uh, how do we configure the different roles? Like uh, on the fundraising team, for example, like what kind of roles do we want to craft, and what's the what are the, what's the, what are the elements that are better better to outsource and to recruit consultants for? or agencies for? What are the roles that we really want to build uh, within the organization, within the office? Um, 
that I think is, and thinking about it not just as like EWB in 2014, but thinking about that in EWB 2014 to 2020. Uh, that's kind of the, uh, so deciding on a trajectory and not getting wrong for me is not necessarily having the answer, but it's setting up our choice so that we can be quite intentional about testing our hypothesis, iterating on it, learning about it, so that we don't make a blind choice today and a year from now feel like, ah, maybe that wasn't the right choice, let's make another blind choice, but that we've actually um, built in the systems and the hypotheses that we can actually test and, and learn from. Um, yeah, that, w that would be it. And um, yeah, that's, I'm, I'm dying to add a lot of stuff, but I think it's better to, uh, to give a chance to others to ask questions as well. Thanks, Boris. And uh, just a reminder to everyone else, um, if you haven't yet asked your questions, you can go to go.ewb.ca slash CEO live chat, or you can email your questions to asktheceo at ewb.ca. We're going to continue to ask a few more questions here, and um, perhaps uh, Boris and Shane will, uh, will be able to stay on the call a little bit past 4 o'clock if you're, if you're interested in, in continuing to ask your question. Right after the call, Boris is going to continue to be on the live chat and uh, answering any questions that we get uh, that have been missed. So if you haven't yet had a chance to, uh, to hear an answer to your question, uh, stay tuned to the live chat. The next question is from Simon Woodside. Simon is the co-president of EWB chapter in Waterloo Region. And his question to Boris is, what are your thoughts on the growth of EWB over the next five years? And do you have a target? Oh, this is, uh, it's exciting. Well, so the, um, on the target piece, I think it's, um, let's build one together. Um, targets are, are motivating when they're, they're set together. Although I do have, um, and I, you know, I did have when I, when I talked with the board um, about the reasons why I was stepping into this role, I, I, I do have ambitions. Um, and, and growth to me, um, we, need to be, we need to be careful about how we, how we phrase it. Uh, there's growth for the sake of growth, and then there's the you know, sort of realizing the potential of this organization. There's growth in uh, the, um, you know, the, the dollar, dollar budget of, the, of EWB. There's growth in its impact. There's growth in uh, the depth of its impact on people in Canada. Um, and so I'm going to answer the question um, about growth in terms of deepening, and maybe I've answered already in my preliminary remarks around um, deepening the impact that we're having on, on EWBers. On, on ourselves, in a way, you know, it's asking, asking and answering the question, and then answering it in an operational way, in a disciplined way. What is it that we want to every EWB or to grow as, and and what are the things that we really want to intentionally um, develop? And you know, you can always already say very safely that you know, facilitation skills, convening skills. Um, systems mapping, root cause analysis are things that we've been intentionally uh, or sometimes maybe we've just in, intuitively uh, been developing over the years. Uh, you know, in, inclusive leadership, uh, every chapter president comes in and, and learns about uh, the dynamics of a group and how to mobilize energies and craft a vision. And, and those things are precious, precious to, to the 21st century and to building vibrant communities. And so to me, um, I think there is a, a, you know, a global engineering skill set or there is a, there is a systems change leadership um, profile that we, can, uh, that we can deepen, that we can uh, take a, a disciplined approach to building together. Um, that would be, for me, uh, like the growth of our, of our impact on, on people in Canada and beyond Canada because then to me there is a growth in terms of expansion, uh, which is continuing to, to build the uh, sort of the... Um, that that fabric that really is the base, uh, the substrate on which we every of our ideas grow, um, and so uh, continuing the work that uh, some people like um, Peter Owen have been doing in Ghana uh, with Afri Lead and supporting um, sort of young leaders, entrepreneurs uh, in Sub-Saharan Africa who are seeing a vision for uh, leadership development and engaging. Uh, young people in, in, in solidarity locally, in innovation, in a systemic approach to creating 
uh, social change. And um, you know, when I look at the uh, the impact of our ventures, well, um, and right now, like the 16 ventures in EWB are are mainly not all of them, but uh, mainly uh, led by by Canadians, and that's true in Canada, and that's true in Sub-Saharan Africa, and. Uh, for me, one of the growth trajectories for EWB is to have a community um, across Sub-Saharan Africa and in Canada, or be part of communities, maybe that's a better way of saying it, uh, that allows us to see um, and to identify and to support um, more um, initiative leaders, more venture leaders uh, uh, locally. In, in Ghana, so Guineans in Ghana, Zambians in, in Zambia, et cetera. But also seeing, continuing that exchange, which is that in, from, in, a, in a social innovation um, sort of, um, sort of, I don't know, liter- like the, the, the sort of, you know, in, in the strategy for social innovation, the leveraging uh, difference in cultures and, and difference in perspective is actually really important as well. And so I don't want to, to pretend or to paint a vision of, a complete separation between Canadians doing stuff in Canada and Ghanaians doing something in Ghana, and that's better that way. I actually very strongly believe, uh, firmly believe that uh, intercultural, um, what the the, sort of the social innovation science calls uh, multiplicity, uh, is a very important piece in uncovering uh, systemic biases. And so I'd love for us to leverage uh, African insights in Canada and uh, Canadian insights in, in Africa and have more ventures jo- like um, sort of led jointly by leaders from, from, from all places. Um, and part of that in Canada is diaspora. Um, and so we'll see how the community evolves beyond uh, universities, uh, professional chapters, and how we can bring in uh, a diversity of, of perspectives in, for the process of innovation. Um, now, on... Of course, there is a, um, you know, the more you grow your footprint as to the number of ideas that come up and want to be supported, uh, the more we need to also be ready to support them. And frankly, like, we, it's been uh, jumps and starts for the past two years in, in, in how much uh, financial resources we've been able to, uh, to commit. And, and as compared, I would say, to the the level of ambition that we've seen in Canada and in Sub-Saharan Africa for uh, EWBR's uh, driving change, uh, we're not responding as fast as we need. Um, and so, you know, my personal um, pitch to the board was in the um, like eight million to yeah, eight million dollars, I think, um, from a, a just a financial footprint of the organization on an annual basis. Um, I, it's, I would say I was, to be transparent, I was safe in, in making that, uh, or I was conservative, not safe, because it's a, it's a challenge to get there. Uh, but I was conservative. I think we can actually get um, bigger than that if we get it right, if we actually understand uh, who wants to be part of those spaces of innovation and, and sort of driving renewal in places like global engineering or food systems. Um, or you know, support to social enterprises, social, like small and growing businesses, uh, making uh, public services more adaptable and responsive to to uh, to local citizens, um, bringing others to the conversation and to to the collective effort to, of innovation in those spaces. Um, and so, yeah, I think there's a huge amount of upside to capture in that space. Um, Thanks, Boris. Yeah, I'm going to uh, go to try and get another question in here. Um, and uh, there are a few people that are actually recently signed on to the call. So you can ask your questions at go.ewb.ca slash CEO live chat. And you can also uh, send an email with your question and we'll, uh, we'll get an answer to you. Ask the CEO at ewb.ca. Boris, a question again from uh, University of, uh, or Western University chapter. Related to our uh, recently developed five-year direction, E2B has developed only uh, recently a long-term strategy and direction. What, if any, changes do you envision being made to the strategy? Yeah, that's a it's a it's a great question. Well, the first the first piece is that I want to recognize is that 
Well, there, there is maybe, uh, it's not necessarily part of the five-year direction, but every time, and for people who in chapters, they will know that very intimately. Uh, when you have a change in chapter president, you also have a change in how that chapter feels and, and functions and like, um, and so there will be some of that. There will be some of that change in the organization. And frankly, um, you know, I can reflect on the, the different dimensions of my own leadership and how that may affect uh, the organization. But um, that's also something we're going to be discovering uh, together, uh, I would say, in the next uh, few years. Um, that said, I'm coming from the EWB family. I, I, you know, in a way, uh, it's not going to feel foreign because um, because of, I've been part of of crafting the the vision, crafting the five year direction. I've very strongly resonated uh, with the the uncovering uh, or the, with the values that have been uncovered um, a few years ago in the organization and in the membership. Um, and so, you know, in, in that way. By virtue of being an internal candidate, I would say the, the level of departure may be uh, less, or at least the, the level of worry that you should have with, with kind of departure, I would say, uh, can be less uh, than if it was had been someone external. Uh, that said, you know, um, on the five-year direction, there is, um, I mean, um, I don't want to portray it as completely static. And I don't have an answer on like, oh, you know, I want to cut this and start that, etc. Like there's no, I think this is fr frankly not just my choice. Um, you know, my, my opinion uh, matters, but um, we're not an organization that is led uh, just by a CEO. Everyone leads with their, with their feet. Everyone leads with their, um, with their motivation and, and where they put their time. And so this is uh, important to have r that recognized um, in, in EWB. And um, yeah, so I don't have any uh, pre-packaged answers on like what's gonna change on our five-year direction. There are some principles which I care very much about around bringing EWB um, or like bringing diversity in, in the EWB membership from a Africa, Canada standpoint. Um, and so the ambition to grow the community outside of uh, the Canadian borders or to continue doing that because it's already happening um, is, is part of that. And it's part of that five-year direction, um, bringing diversity in the, in the, you know, on, the, on the board of directors may, may also be part of that uh, in the same way. Um, the, on the, the actual portfolios and, you know, um, we have made a commitment, and I was part of making that commitment for to to five portfolios. Um, I think that this is um, potentially an area where there is a bit more it's a bit more dynamic. Uh, I like there's a frame uh, like a um, yeah. There, um, we want to make sure that we stick to the areas of focus that we've um, that we've uh, defined, so that we can actually learn how how much uh, traction we can create in each of them. And what I like about the portfolio is that not all of them is at the same stage. Like we have a, a substantial amount of experience in the adaptable public services space, in the small and growing businesses space. We have very little experience in the food uh, system space and we're accelerating. Our global engineering work is like, basically was founded with the organization and, and should continue and being a central, central um, sort of engagement area uh, of the organization. So I'm not, um, there's not gonna be a revolution uh, within the strategy. Um, there, will, there will be adaptation, there will be, we'll learn along the way what is taking off, what is not taking off, um, you know, what is emergent, um, and, and what do we want to, to include in our, in our strategy that is, um, that is coming um, as opportunities. Um, so it's not completely static. It's not completely opportunistic. I want us to stay, remain within the next five years uh, in, a, in a bit of a dynamic place. Thanks, Boris. Wanted to um, just share a message from uh, Claire and Gerald, um, who wanted to wish you well, Boris, uh, and the entire organization much success. And uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, Boris's parents uh, wanted to <laughs> congratulate him and, uh, and are certainly behind him and, uh, and the entire organization. They say that his spirit 
of his commitment is always present, understood, and fruitful. Go to another question uh, to uh, to Shane. How would you characterize the CEO role for EWB in one or two sentences? Paul, it sounds like we're getting a lot of noise on the line. Is there any way to manage that? Are we okay now? Go ahead, Shane. I think we are okay now. Okay. Um. Well, I, I see the question here in terms of uh, there's maybe a bit more context in terms of what are the differences between answer today and answer one year ago. Um, uh, I mean, the, the the role of the CEO, um, uh, you know, maybe as as recently as one year ago, I, I one of the most important things was to articulate the the new vision that we had and educate the organization on that new vision. Um, uh, get people to start thinking differently about the way in which we wanted to have impact. Um, the role that ventures would play and, you know, the connectivity between those, that, that venture focus and our chapters, our membership, our passion, that was, that was, um, you know, that was the role of, 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 uh, of the CEO. And that was one of the principal um, objectives that we had for that role. Um, I would say now, um, you know, we haven't necessarily achieved completely a re-education of the membership or the you know, the community in which EWB is operating, that will be a continual challenge. But the role now is execution. The role now is to is just to ensure that uh, the money, the resources that we're deploying uh, on our various uh, uh, portfolios and within our ventures is uh, creating impact and to be able to, as Boris articulated, be able to tell that story of impact. Um, and honestly, I think if we do that right, then um, uh, growing the organization uh, in the right way uh, is 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 very achievable, um, but it's tricky, isn't it? I mean, it's difficult to articulate what kind of impact you're, you're having. Boris uh, talked about uh, Peter Owen's venture in AfroLead. Well, what kind of what kind of metrics can you build around um, an effort which is primarily focused on encouraging and uh, enabling uh, leadership uh, within a demographic that's not had. Um, uh, a lot of uh, of opportunity to to be educated or, or to demonstrate that leadership. You know, so what sort of metrics do you create so that someone wants to pour more money into that uh, into that uh, venture? Um, so so that that is it's all about execution. Um, and I think if we achieve that, then we can achieve you know what is a, another um, uh, uh, very um, important responsibility of the CEO at this time in its organization. And that is to ensure its sustainability. And by that, I mean, you know, if 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 we can execute, we can articulate the impact of that execution, um, and we can build a, a fun, you know, a substantial uh, funding base. Then um, I think ultimately, what we mean by sustainability is we don't want money to be the issue. We don't want money to be the constraint. Um, Boris has already uh, indicated that the ventures in themselves are demanding a lot. You know, they're they're mature. Uh, enough uh, to to really understand what could be done, the impact that could be um, uh, achieved by by more resources. So many of our ventures are at a point now where they're underfunded, um, they're under-resourced, uh, and we know that if we could bring kind of a sustainable uh, source of, of support uh, for those ventures, that uh, our impact could be even greater. So we know how to scale, and we know uh, in what areas we'd like to scale. It's really a question of execution at this point, and uh, so I think there there is a, a you know an, an organizational imperative around execution that that involves making sure uh, again as Boris said making sure people are in the right roles we've got those roles well understood um, and that you know there's appropriate processes and procedures and whatnot in place uh, to make sure that uh, that we're executing so that would be my answer. Thanks, Shane. We're going to uh, uh, close down uh, the call shortly. I uh, just wanted to uh, give Boris one opportunity here for a quick answer uh, to a question that's come in, and, uh, and then we'll continue uh, on our live chat. That question, Boris, is what was the first thing you did uh, after receiving the call from Shane uh, announcing uh, the appointment of, uh, of yourself as the next CEO? Wow. Um, 
so I received a call during a uh, Sunday afternoon. Um, I was at home, uh, and when I when I got the call and I understood that uh, it was uh, Shane and and George on the line and that they were going to give me the uh, the news, um, I found a chair <laughs> to make sure that I wasn't going to fall over. Um, <laughs> And I, I actually stepped out in the in the backyard in the grass um, and in the sun. Um, and yeah, I, the first thing I did was um, sit down in on the grass and uh, uh, well, I cried a little bit. Um, I I thanked them uh, for for believing in me. Um, yeah, and and I took a little bit of time to just. Uh, look at nature um, and to to sort of like let the let, let the feelings I guess uh, come and go and and uh, find my my footing again um, and and then I, I I went to Alana uh, my wife and and Kian and Annika um, Kian is four years old and Annika is two years old and um, and I told them and we had a little bit of a, a heart to heart on. Uh, yeah, whether we we would be together in in this decision and 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 what it meant uh, for us, now that, that it was real, because we could have had all again, we did have all these conversations before. Um, it it only becomes uh, real when you when you really have the choice in front of you, um, and um, and yeah, it 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 brought uh, serenity. Serenity, but I don't know if it's an English word. Uh, and it brought um, motivation and inspiration to me uh, to know that they were there and, and that they were proud and that they were excited as, as much as I was. <laughs> thanks, Paul. And, and if it's the, uh, and the last James question, for... I was going to say, Paul, that if it's the last question and we're going to close the call, I just wanted to to say thank you again uh, to people who joined and uh, iterate that. Uh, speaking, speaking in the void, but more here, and, and our put it, posting question is less awkward than I thought, um, but definitely not the same as as meeting people in person. And so I really look forward to uh, to connecting um, and to sharing vision and to excitement uh, with people across Canada, 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 people across Canada. 